Good evening, free enterprise viewers, and welcome to the final match on the docket for tonight, a uh, veritable clash of the titans featuring Blaze from Team We Wear Shorts in Winter against Martin Broadcog from Team No Springs. Powering tonight's restream, uh, my name is Esgrunt, uh, we have Hush Pyramid handling the restream, Mecha pushing the buttons, and joining me in the comms with today is Y2Sky. How are you doing tonight? <laughs> I'm doing fantastic. I am super excited to watch this matchup. Um, uh, under most circumstances, you would probably find this matchup uh, deep in a tournament bracket, uh, pretty close to the finals. Uh, but tonight, we've got it here in mid-season form in week four, uh, the final week of Potion Party. Um, and uh, both Blaze and Martin have been practicing this flag set a lot, been racing really well. So I'm, ex I'm excited to see what they put together for us tonight. Um, starting off with a Sid Hero, which is going to provide a lot of flexibility for our runners, uh, especially since the Dwarf Axe is still available to manipulate the agility to the negative side. Um, yeah, so it's, 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 this looks like a fun race. Yeah, so it's uh, definitely one of the heroes you want to see right off the start. Uh, it's going to make your agility uh, situation uh, a bit of a cakewalk, especially if you get that Dwarf Axe later on in the scene. Uh, but uh, rounding out the set of objectives in addition to the set of five, uh, today we've got the Giant of Babel, uh, so we have three uh, Darkness Crystal locked objectives today. Uh, we have the Tower of Zot, uh, so we're going to be on the hunt for that Earth Crystal. And uh, in a... Uh, the rarely visited location in this flag set, we have the Sealed Cave as a required objective. I say rarely visited because, of course, this is a flag set that has the Warp Glitch on. Normally, the only reason you would want to go into Sealed Cave, assuming you're able to pull off that Warp Glitch, is to see if that boss is the one, the only Demis. Uh, but now we have another reason to go in there, so uh, we'll get to see something a little bit out of the ordinary for once. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what objectives play out and how our runners route those in. Um, none of those three uh, um, non-standard objectives uh, the quickest out of the bunch. So we could definitely be in for a grind of a seed where uh, kind of the um, the macro level routing decisions are going to matter a little more. Uh, yep. Uh, so it's it's all going to be about how quickly we can find those uh, those last few key items. This is not one of those seeds where you you get underground, you get the darkness crystal, and you're in go mode. Uh, we need to find at least one more key item besides those two uh, in order to get ourselves uh, to the end of, through the end of the seed. Uh, but it looks like we are just getting underway. So in just a moment, we'll see who our starting uh, partner character is, who the initial boss is, and what the initial key item is. That's Edward. Uh, not exactly who you want to see. Uh, runners will not have to look very far to see to find the Demis, uh, which holds a key item, and they get a Zeus gauntlet for our troubles. Uh, so uh, this is going to lead to some pretty interesting decisions out of the gate. Yeah, Zeus Gauntlet, equipable by Sid right off the bat, is going to provide a nice strength boost uh, if we can find some weaponry. Um, Edward, not going to do a whole lot until we get a hold of the spoon. Um, Artemis Bow is probably going to go to our hero, at least in the early game. Um, but as we're getting started, welcome to our free Enterprise Raiders. Um, please, as always, no spoiling the details of the race that you just came from. Um, we do not want to see newspapers flying tonight. Just airships. All right, so right off the start, uh, Blaze uh, lands in Baron, uh, peeks Baron in, finds a Gulbiz uh, facing off against Kane across the table there. So we know that Kane is the third character available in our seats. Uh, Martin makes a beeline for Eblin Castle, uh, presumably to get his hands on the veritable treasure trove of money that we're going to have here, possibly scattered with the trap test locations while he's here. Uh, of course, this is a flag set that has K-Trap on. We're going to need to need to remember where all of these trap chests are because there's a very real possibility that at least one of the key items we're looking for is going to be in one of these trap chests. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Martin's pretty much used this opener all season. I, I ended up incorporating it in my runs. I've not had a complaint for a single seed doing it, um, and so far paying off pretty well for Martin. No trap chests in that in the middle, and looked like a pretty impressive sum. Yeah, 81k right off the bat in the middle, so a good start for Martin. Yeah, I mean, while Blaze is now in Watery Pass, uh, we'll see how much of Watery Pass Blaze wants to loot here. Uh, these chests are relatively valuable, um, so at least the front half of the, the well, the, the front room of uh, Watery Pass. There was a 42,000 chest, for example. Uh, you, you love to see something like that. 
Um, but it should be well enough to be able to fund our initial purchases of equipment here. All right, so Scrunch, you played this a little bit, I guess. Um, what are you looking for as far as equipment once our, our heroes get some money here for this party? Uh, well, right now, I'm more interested in seeing who... If it were me, I'd be more interested in seeing who the other party members uh, that I'd be able to pick up. So, so, like, we know Kane, for example, but a lot of the shopping is going to depend on who is going to be able to equip some of the things that we're looking for. Um, so we, we don't yet have a good grasp on that yet from what our runners are currently doing. So, it, like, it makes sense that you'd want to get the, the money in hand before you actually go scanning up for equipment here. Uh, I just personally would want to see who I'm equipping before I start uh, before I start making purchases like this. Gotcha. Yeah, if it's me, uh, before I go take on the Hobbs, I'm definitely looking for maybe an Artemis bow. Uh, Archer charm, though. Sid, uh, coming uh, coming equipped with Archer bow and charm arrows, thanks to the C Necky flag. So that's serviceable right off the bat, especially with that Zeus gauntlet. And Martin's found power shirts in looks like Agard already. Yeah, that's Agar, and we find some variety of Mylon. Uh, it's Mylon Z, in fact, the the only Z we're going to be seeing this see. Uh, facing off against Tala on Mount Hobbs here. Um, Sid is equipped enough that we can just basically one-shot the fight here. Uh, not quite, but very close to. That was over a thousand damage without an opening arrow attack. Um, but th this fight's going to be over very quickly. Uh, Martin, meanwhile, is now in Mysidia, checking out the shops here. Uh, not much of immediate note there, as the, the samurai... I think that was a samurai bow, or was it the arrows? Those are the so, arrows, and I'm, I'm honestly surprised Martin didn't pick them up yet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, it looks like, especially with the Mylon Z there, that, that first fight on Hobbs can be pretty easy. Tella, uh, finding Tella at, that, at this point in the seed is fantastic. Gives you access to exit. Um, if you take him up Mount Ordeals uh, for a quick little hike, he will also have uh, the warp, a warp, so you can use the warp glitch. But... Yeah, now that brings Antlion into a good check. You can just exit right out. Yeah, Tella is a little bit underrated, uh, especially by newer runners. Uh, he brings a very large amount of utility to to your party. Uh, and when Sea Hero flags not on, he makes a great anchor as well. Um, but uh, probably the most immediate use for a, a Tella in, this, in, in these seats is uh, being able to cast Exit immediately. Uh, so, speaking of Samurai bows, uh, Martin has found them in Silvera along with Artie arrows as Blaze finds Leviathan uh, working in that line game. Yeah, that's a nice pickup for Martin. Uh, Sid's going to be able to pretty much take on most of the overworld with this setup. Uh, might need a little bit of defense later on, but uh, yeah, I don't think Martin's going to have any problem with the first few checks here. Yeah, uh, and if we do want to keep Eddie around long term with that spoon proved elusive, we can always equip Eddie similarly. He's he can he can uh, shoot arrows just as well as the next person. Ooh, uh, Eddie taking an ice too, and uh, gonna have to nap for the uh, victory dance from Leviathan. Yeah, okay, so as Blaze picks up this earth, this very important earth crystal from Atline Cave, uh, Martin is making his way up Mount Haas, or he should certainly be facing off against this Mylon Sea, against this Tella. Um, so this fight will probably go even faster than Blaze's on this side. I think at this point, Blaze uh, may be likely to make a beeline directly for Zot here. Um, possible that he. Like, there's plenty of shops in the Troy area, he can kit out his party as he sees fit, uh, but especially those uh, two additional character checks. Plus, it should, uh, if Blaze want to go into the treasury here, uh, that's enough funding to be able to get you a lot of the rest of the equipment here. And that is, in fact, exactly what we see Blaze doing here. Um, we know it's going to be T-Money out of 10 for the treasury, just due to the flag set, but uh, it's... Uh, we we, we find it a little bit amusing to give it give an over under on you know how valuable is the treasury this time around yeah if we yeah. start seeing like 30k 40k chests uh flying around it ends up being a pretty good treasury um and even sometimes uh even sometimes get a streak of under 10 then it doesn't turn out that well but let's see what we get well we start with a 49 a 40 a 42 a 22 that's this is uh this is pretty valuable 55. 
Another 40 tail. Yeah, that's about a that's definitely a nine out of ten for a uh, team money treasury for sure. All right, um, you see, so that's an exit out. I suspect Blaze is now going to head into try to check shops, and that is exactly what we see. Yeah, the Zot play here, um, you could do it. It's I am not really a fan of it at this very early stage. Um, we still don't have any agility boosters for Sid at this point. And uh, that would definitely create a problem at that first Zot spot. Um, there's, I think, about 9,000 HP to chew through. Um, so you don't really want Sid manually taking those, turn uh, those turns. You either want to boost, ag boost his agility and or take Tela up or deals and get him Berserk to make that fight a lot faster before you climb the tower. But we'll see what our runners do with it. Yeah, like the gamble that you would be making here would be uh, that you can find the right equipment for the characters that you are going to get at the top of tower and hope that they can uh, get you through that second fight. Uh, that, of course, still requires that you can get to the first fight to be able to get there. Um, we, If you've got you know, a, a set of Sandra Arbo's Arty Arrows like Martin does, uh, you might be able to pull it off, but it is a little bit sketchy this early on in the seed. Martin looks to be retracing Blaze's steps. Blaze checking out some additional shops. Yeah, uh, this is Blaze in Mist Village. We see Martin making a beeline for the treasury. Um, Blaze picks up an Avenger and a Dancing Dagger from Mist. Uh, so we know Blaze is a white spear from the Trial Weapon Shop as well. He clearly has eyes on the cane that's sitting in Baronade right now. Uh, we'll make his way over to... Uh, Kaipo, uh, check shops here. Maybe peek the bed and see who the character in here is as well. There's the crystal swords if Cecil turns up. Yeah, I like building uh, Mist and Kaipo here. Check the bed, check, the, check all the other shops. Um, kind of clear this area out. Um, one lesser known thing that I actually like doing with this is I like, uh, especially if there's an objective that leans towards it, I like raising the hovercraft and piloting the hovercraft from Damp's PM down to this area. It actually works really well. Yeah, uh, I, I guess it stands right now we don't have any objectives that require the hovercraft, so it makes a, a little bit less sense than it would otherwise than if we had, say, uh, launch the Falcon as one of our objectives, or we had a tail turn as one of our objectives. Um, Sometimes I'm inclined to launch the hovercraft anyway, just because it's a good idea. Um, it's uh, it's frequently useful just to peek in the damn scene basement to see if uh, uh, you, you can get that little extra boost from down there. But often only if you're going to be there anyway. Definitely. And we see Martin uh, making his standard purchase of 99 carats. Excellent. Okay, Blaze is now headed back into Baron Inn. Uh, we know that Golbez is the boss here. Kane is the character. Uh, once Blaze gets through these two fights, assuming that the second fight is something passable, um, that Kane is going to be very well equipped. Uh, Martin, on the other hand, is headed up Zot. Uh, so we may get that risky play of uh, seeing if he can defeat this first boss here with the equipment that we've got now. <laughs> Yeah, Sammy Artie's pretty good here. Also, nice to be Flame Dog Chest, as we're about to see. Uh, and it's Vanilla Spot here. Yeah, uh, so this is, uh, of course, a trap chest. There's a chance that a key item is here in this flag set. So uh, we will see if this has value today. I do want to point out, uh, Blaze knowingly went into the Gomez fight with Edward dead. Uh, so that means that we don't get any demolishes. We know who the two characters who are going to be up for this fight will be. And that was a wipe to Flame Dog on Martin's end. Uh, uh, no, it was ideal. not actually. No? It was a it was a reset. Uh, it, Martin saw Artemis errors and reset out. So ah, so not a wipe, just uh, not a check worth doing. So I guess we're not going to see who the the bosses at the top of Zot are at the moment. Uh, instead, Martin heads over to Fabul, and that was a wipe to Gulbez on Blaze's side. We're going to see another attempt on that in just a moment. Yeah, the magic at this Baron 1 spot is deceptively strong, and it's uh, this spot is also fast. So, yeah, this is this is not a gimme here. And that is a Stardust Rod available in Fabul right now. Tella is going to be very happy to be th throwing that around. Uh, 
Okay, so we'll see if Blaze can get through the Goldbus fight on the second pass. Uh, Martin is defending for Bull. We shall see who the boss this time around is. Uh, it's King Queen Evelyn. We have a, a foreign invasion of Fubal this time around. Yeah, I never quite understood why the King Queen, uh, King and Queen of Evelyn would do that, but um, Sid is kind of going to shut this down pretty quickly with uh, Artemis arrows and Tell is going to wait for the Sardis rod around. Yeah, this uh, the negotiations will be short. They were indeed short. Okay, uh, so Martin is through that now. Uh, this is, of course, a key item check. Uh, we shall see what we get from going through that. Uh, just an ice brand. So our underground access uh, remains elusive. Uh, we haven't found it yet. There's still plenty of overworld checks left to do at this point, so we will see where that force magnet key turns up. Yeah, I think I think we'll see Martin go for deals here if I'm if I'm going to place a, a little bit of a friendly wager on this. Because um, yeah, again, you the, um, the Zot One fight can be quite lengthy if you don't have any means to speed it up. And so, yep, get and I like this play. Get your get your Tele set for when you get underground. Uh, if you happen to stumble into a Bethel, uh before Zot Two, he's already a Paladin. Yeah, th this is a good play here. And Blaze is through the Goldbest fight and finds the Kaipo officer and soldiers here in this second spot in the Baron Inn. Uh, so one other particular feature of this flag set is that uh, the middle three bosses fly he's on. So uh, while the officer will still flee if you kill the three soldiers here, um, the, the soldiers and the officer are otherwise... Uh, they have the boss bit set, so a lot of the standard tricks like uh, coffins or instant death attacks or even status spells like stone or slow or what have you will not affect these enemies. Fortunately, uh, with everyone in the back row like this, uh, they still can't hit particularly hard. Uh, so it's just going to be a matter of being able to get rid of the soldiers uh, to end this fight and pick up Arcane. Meanwhile, on uh, Martin's mm -hmm. side, he got through a plague at the um, Ordeal's one spot very quickly, uh, but we see a DKC at the second spot, and this could be this could be a little interesting. Yeah. So speaking of no free bosses, the DKC is the one boss is one particular boss you don't want to see turning up late in the seed because those dark waves they they start coming and they don't stop coming. Uh, so. Later on in the seed, when these dark ways deal a lot more damage than you see in this spot, it's a very difficult fight to get to. Uh, one other quirk of this is that we know the Ordeal's item now is not going to be the Magma Key, uh, due to the interaction between the Beano Free Flag and uh, the Key Item Safety Checks. Um, DKC is in addition to the normal list of Vavalas, Golbez, and Wyvern uh, that can block underground access, uh, specifically if the Beano Free Flag is on. Uh, but as, uh, as Martin gets to that fight, blazes through the officer-soldier fight, has Kane, and has the Rat Tail as a result of that journey. Yeah, rat Tail will be nice for a turn in when we find the hook. Um, picking up that Kane, though, uh, Blaze is pretty much going to equalize Martin here on uh, just check-clearing power, just by virtue of just putting that Avenger on the Kane and enter a fight, and you just let him go. Yeah, I think uh, it's quite possible that Blaze uh, being here, uh, they might be able to take some of the trap chests while 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 they're here. Uh, we've got the trap kit as a starting item. We've got Kane who can hit things with the Avenger and the White Sphere. Uh, we are probably in a position to be able to clear some of these trap chests right now. Yeah, I think that's I think that's the reason for Blaze to play, and uh, I think that's a Baron key. That is a Baron key, room. and that's our other Mylon. So this Mylon is Mylon friends. Friends of the King. Yeah, so, of course, this being a Sea Hero flag set, Sid needs to do this by himself. Uh, conveniently enough, Morton has an Earth Hammer for Sid. This should uh, take out the gas with one swing, and we'll probably take out Milo on the second swing. Very good pickup here by Martin. <laughs> oh, my body. But yeah, uh, over on Blaze's side, um, Blaze definitely going for the trap chest here. Um, you know, in pretty good shape money wise and gear wise, just from that treasury. But uh, yeah, now that we have Avenger Kane, trap chests are good. Um, 
good experience to boost paint up from that level 10 and start getting his drink multipliers up. All right, here's the Mad Ogre's chest in Eblen. Uh, these punch fairly hard. Of course, our party can punch fairly hard here as well, assuming that uh, they're not Eddie and die with, uh, with die from one punch from the ogres. But uh, Kane going down here is not ideal. Tala going down here is not ideal. Um, but I think uh, Sid is taking a little uh, less enough damage here that I think we're still going to be able to get through this fight. Yeah, those numbers on Sid. Um... I think Blaze may still have the Zeus Gauntlet on Sid, given him the yep. distance and not Kane. And I mean, we've got the the, the charm arrows here uh, with a with a good solid hit. Sid can just one shot the ogres here. And gonna let Sid just get through that trap chest, uh, getting another Zeus Gauntlet. <laughs> okay, well, problem. if the if the Zeus Gauntlet was even if it's still on Sid, then we've got an excuse to give Kane another Zeus Gauntlet here. Okay, Martin going after this Gulbez and that Kane, and well, uh, assuming that this fight goes reasonably well on Martin's side, he'll be like, facing up against the officers and soldiers in just a few moments as well. Yeah, Martin got Edward to hide, so that might work out well. Um, have Edward hide up until the last attempt to demolish, and then, or until the retreat, and then bring him back out. Alright, Blaze has found the uh, Black Hat and Lamia chest. Uh, Edward throws an hourglass here uh, just to shut down the counterattacks there because we're not yet in a position where we can one-shot uh, the Lamia at least. Sid is, of course, having no trouble in front of the Black Cats here. We do see a, uh, a Light Potion come out uh, to Light Flitch on one of the Black Cats. Uh, and, in fact, the other Black Cat as well. So we're going to be getting a nice, happy chunk of experience for this fight while we're at it. Meanwhile, Martin gets through Golbez, uh, swinging that Earth Hammer. He's able to get through, but only Sid standing for this uh, officer fight coming up. Yep, uh, that should be fine. I think uh, with that Earth Hammer in hand, we're going to have a fairly easy time with this fight. So, uh, yeah, there, there it goes. So just immediately use the Earth Hammer. They're not going to be able to deal enough damage to threaten Sid here. A couple of... Uh, uses of the Earth Hammer would be sufficient to get us to this fight, I think. Uh, Blaze has the package from the Black Cat Lamia chest, and has found the third and final track fish in Eblin Castle, the Stalemate Skull chest. Uh, we see another hourglass come out here, uh, so this fight uh, will not take much longer as well. The Man. question is us in chat, uh, with that package in hand, uh, is there anyone we would be willing to sit into the package for besides Cecil, since of course we know where the Crystal Swords are? Um, the only other character that comes to mind on my part would be Edge, and that presupposes that I have found equipment for Edge, which I don't think we've seen yet. Yeah, Edge, maybe I'm not worried about that much, especially with the Stink 7, there's a good chance to find a duplicate. Um, I may take a Rosa, just to start... Uh, start leveling up a white mage and kind of have that healer role squared away. Um, yeah, Martin appears to be through and has that cane. Uh, how huge was that Earth Hammer pickup for Martin? Oh goodness. Yeah, that's it's proven it's worth twice now, uh, both in the Moylan friends fight and on ordeals and in the officer soldier fight here. Uh, so Blaze uh, having put the last trap chest on Eblin uh, picks up a defense sword for the trouble and is now parked outside of ordeals presumably to uh also make the ordeals check here um of course uh, martin with the baron key uh is currently in the baron shops and as our tracker points out uh we have found uh dwarf axis in baron so uh, <laughs> uh we we've got basically the one piece of equipment we need uh to make anchoring a little bit easier with our sid hero not only anchoring, but back row glitching that cane also. Yes, indeed. The Dwarf Axe is the one back row capable weapon that Kane can equip, so it's very important for him as well. Blaze retracing Martin's steps heading up Mount Ordeals, so I'm, I'm expecting a, a kind of a following in Martin's footsteps here going through this route. Yeah, so this plague is going to die in one or two bow shots. Um... 
Martin is coming up against that Demis that we saw in the Bygan spot initially, so I suspect um, that after we're through the initial Baron Castle checks that we're also going to see Martin double back to Miss Village and see what that key item is as well. Yeah, I think this is why Martin uh, dove Baron Castle that early. It's uh, Unless Baron Castle is an objective, it's not a it's not a check you will see a runner really favor, uh, but that Demis making a 2 for one changes the math there a lot. Yeah, like it... it this is a flag set where the cave summon flag is not on, so in many other flag sets where that is on, Barry Castle represents two possible key items, one from the main throne and one from the Odin spot in the basement. However, this time around it's just the one, plus the character check, plus in this very specific case, uh, we have the Demist in the Bygan spot to get us another key item check from going to Mist Village. Uh, so, in most cases in this flag set, it's less valuable than it might be otherwise, but uh, this time around, uh, we've got the extra value just by virtue of Demis being here. Okay, who's on the throne today? Hey, Moon Sparkle, this could be saucy. That is Ogopogo. Not the worst place to see Ogopogo. Um, Sid's got some pretty good attack power, gonna get us through this, and we've got plenty of Cure 2 potions. Yeah, um, so, yeah the, so there's a, there's a question in chat. Uh, what item does Blaze have that Martin does not? That item is the package, which we found in one of the trap chests in Everett Castle. Yeah, and given Martin's, uh, given Martin's route here in um, going through Baron Castle and probably getting enough XP to continue going up through that Zot, uh, especially with Telepowered up now. Uh, I could see Martin continue to fade Eblon Castle for some time. Yeah, like, uh, there's no real value in Eblon Castle right now. Um, like that, we've, we've got the package. The package only has value if we've got a, uh, a character in Miss Village that we can't get anywhere else. And even then, we're probably not going to want to sit through the cutscene for that. Okay, but Martin is through that Ogopogo fight. We're going to see the character first, and a minute or so after that, we'll see what the key item we get from Baron Castle is. That is a Yong. Um, that is the fifth to sixth character we have seen in the seed. Um, we already have enough of a tank in the form of our Sid hero here. Um, it is early enough in the seed that it might be worth keeping Yong around if we don't find anyone um, who's a little bit... Uh, a little bit easier to get up to speed on the hitting things front than Yang is. But we shall see. Yeah, Yang not who I'd want to find in this spot. Uh, Blaze through the changing room fight, uh, but you could definitely see the difference in not having that Earth Hammer on Sid. Had to use Thor Rages to get through most of the gas in that spot, and it took uh, a couple more turns than the Earth Hammer did. So that's the Adamant Rock that we got from Baron Castle. Um, so... As we would now realize, if we didn't already know this from um, the position of the various bosses we've seen, uh, Martin is going to do is going to check the Demis item here. But I believe it is known at this point that this cannot be the magma key that we're looking for by virtue of where Dark Knight Cecil turned up on ordeals, and in fact that item is the pan. So if we didn't otherwise know, we can now deduce with certainty. Uh, that it, the whatever chain leads to the magma key is behind that earth crystal and completion of Zot. Yeah, at this point, uh, both runners now completed Mount Ordeal, so uh, pretty well set up to go through that, although you didn't even need to power up Tella if you got that adventure from game. Yep, uh, we certainly have the power to be able to get through a Zot at this point in time. Uh, so, well, at, at least uh, if you've got, you know, Avenger Kane, then you're going to have that level of power. And Martin, in fact, is now headed to Zot, and I think this time, uh, with those Poison Claws in hand that we're putting on Yang, with the Avenger that uh, we now have for Kane, uh, we're just going to be able to clear Zot now. Yeah, Martin's, uh, Martin's setup's coming together pretty well. Um, probably would like to see a Cecil or a Rosa at the top of the tower at this point to really kind of round the party out.
Okay, Blaze, uh, flying around doing a little bit more shopping, I think we'll find some of the higher tier items that uh, Barton already has in hand, uh, but I think uh, it will not be too much longer before Blaze uh, makes their way to Zod as well. Yeah, and we saw a Baron shop check, but without diving the Baron castle, so this may be a shop and then kind of uh, catch right up to Martin going up Zod. Yep, because at this point in time, you know, uh, Bla Blaze, as as uh, as uh, Becker Tracker is pointing out, um, Blaze should be in a position to know that the underground access will be through Zot. <laughs> okay, Martin is at the top floor of Zot. Is at the save point. Is resting up. We will see in just a moment or two who the first of the two Zot bosses is. Okay, here we go. Okay, uh, so that's one blue robe. This is Water Hag. Uh, if you see more than one blue robe turn up in this spot, it is the Alt Gauntlet. Uh, but no, it's just Water Hag. Normally, this is a free fight, uh, but uh, this, of course, being uh, be no free, uh, you'll still get the two lines of dialogue from Anna. But um, the third hit here does not end the fight. You actually do need to complete Water Hag's HP. Um, Arguably still better here than some other bosses that can turn off from this spot because all Water Hag is capable of doing is uh, is punching, and uh, we we can punch fairly hard here as well. Yeah, this is this is a good spot to find the Water Hag. Um, he can be very punchy in particular in the late game spots. Yeah, you don't want to see a Water Hag in uh, Cape Muhammad or the, the or some of the Moon spots either, but. Uh, Blaze is now, in fact, in Zot, is checking the Flame Dog chest, uh, not knowing that this is just going to be those Artemis arrows. Uh, but Blaze is in a position where they're going to just continue going up Zot at this point, because we've got the power to be able to clear it now. Yeah, so you see our two runners getting close to converging here, and that's by virtue of their, their respective fades. Blaze fading Baron Castle, Martin fading Eblon Castle. Um... So this is interesting. So we know Baron has value. Um, Eblon does not. So yeah, I wonder. I wonder if the choice of fades could come into play as we see as we get to the end of the race. Okay. So things we're seeing here. That's a Rosa as our first character. That's a very welcome find. Uh, we know we have a white mage available. Let's see, that isn't Tella, who is technically a white mage for the purposes of certain checks. Uh, we know that Vigan is the second boss in Dwarf Castle, uh, very important, and that is a duplicate cane that we find in the second character spot here, so exactly the opposite of the positioning of those two characters in Vanilla. Um, but we do relish the knowledge that Vigan is not somewhere particularly rude. Uh, we see Martin drop Yang in favor of that Rosa, that's something that I would be doing in the circumstances as well, I think. And we're under a second boss, which is the Dealers. This, uh, this could be interesting. Yeah, um, this is a little bit problematic here. Kane swinging right away with the Avenger, and this spot has high magic power. Yeah, uh, I think we're, we're still going to be able to hit and shoot quickly enough to be able to end these bosses fairly quickly. We have, uh, we have Sid with the Arty Arrows on hand. Uh, that's going to basically just end one of the Dealers immediately. Um... So we'll see like one or two fire counters here, but uh, we're we're basically just through this fight. <laughs> more than six thousand. That's more than twice as much hit points as either of the dealers has in this spot. <laughs> That's hilarious. Gotta love Sid and his uh, middle slot accuracy. Yep. Okay, uh, so we're through that fight. Uh, the most important thing that we've seen here so far is Rosa. Uh, but we also have the knowledge that whatever item we get here, it's either going to be the Magma Key or something that leads us to the Magma Key. To answer Sheep Launcher's question, uh, Martin hasn't been in his party playing Final Fantasy V. Look, <laughs> do you watch Martin Broadcloak stream? Like, <laughs> he, you like you could you could roll a D twenty to figure out what Martin 
uh, what Final Fantasy Martin would play on a given day, and we do in fact find the magma key in in uh, the Zod jet. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, but uh, Final Fantasy 19 is not out yet. <laughs> Probably won't be for several years. Uh, but yes, uh, Martin with the Magma Key in hand, of course, uh, makes a beeline directly for Agart. Uh, he's going to quickly peek the shots here because he hasn't done so yet, but we're going to see the Mega Key clearing down the well and we'll get our underground access right away here. Okay, so you're going underground with this uh, with this party set up and these key items. Um, where are you going first? There's several different options you could do here. Uh, I think the most plausible play under those circumstances is to make a... Well, so, Martin specifically has the pan here. You'd be remiss not to go and do the pan block nearly immediately to set up the additional key item checks. Um, but other than that, uh, you're going to want to be in Fame March sooner rather than later, both for the freebie and to see who your two objective bosses down there are. Yep, both very good options. Um, Dwarf also not bad, considering that you've got Nutella who can cast Warp, so you have a two for one there. Um, and oddly enough, the Keyless, the Keyless Tower could be pretty well in play too. Um, with the Earth Hammer for Sid, you're pretty well equipped to take out the alerts uh, with one shot. So. Yeah, so of course, uh, this being a K-Trap flag set, um, going into tower early is more viable an option than it would be otherwise, because you've got those four additional potential item locations that you can do here. Uh, but as I said up front, um, the most sensible thing to do if you've got the pan and you're getting underground here is to go do the pan bunk, and that is exactly what Morton is doing here. Uh, meanwhile, Blaze is also through Zot, uh, getting that objective on the board, gets the Magma Key, and uh, presumably will be following Martin underground here shortly as well. well. So we'll see what Blaze decides to do once they get underground, assuming that that's where they're going. Oh, uh, that is, we're doing the Baron play here. Yeah, that is in fact not where Blaze is going. Blaze is headed into Baron. Okay, uh, but Martin has done the pan bong. I suspect we're going to see a direct line to fame art share. That is exactly what's happening. Yep. Uh, if you're going to do, um, going to walk through damage tiles, just might as well get both of them out of the way. Uh, and also, if uh, if one of the fame arch bosses is relatively easier, you can probably just take it out the first time down here. Um, yeah. Definitely, definitely um, intrigued by this Baron play on um, Blaze of Heart, even after finding the Magma Key. You gotta wonder if uh, if you may be thinking, um, okay, yeah, something before I get too far underground and start playing that section of the game, maybe make sure there's nothing here, because I do know that Demon is here. Yeah, uh, so th this might be a place specifically to clear out that Demon before we get too much further in the scene. Uh, Martin showing remarkable prescience off, uh, heals up immediately before opening the warrior's chest here. Uh, so, uh, we see an hourglass, uh, as the first item used. Uh, assuming Tella survives this round of attacks, which she should, because they're not actually actively targeting him for some reason. Uh, the hourglass will come out just in time to, uh, produce the warriors immediately after they've attacked. Uh, we're going to see Kane swinging the Avenger here, but one other possible thing that we can do with the Assassin Dagger that we got from the Trap Kit is these warriors should now be in a position where we can uh, hit them with the Assassin Dagger and uh, basically kill them immediately. They should be frozen at a safe where that's possible here. Of course, if you can just deal enough damage outright, you don't need to worry about setting that up. But uh, yeah, just, just let Kane hit things in this case. see the opportunity for a few more life glitches to come out here, so uh, Martin is going to, if even if this isn't a key item, the experience will be well worth the trouble of God going through this chest. Yeah, this gets you just under 40k XP to, to life glitch four of these warriors. Um, just, a, just a hair above what you'd get if you popped a siren at this point in the game, uh, if the you know, XP were not on. So, definitely equivalent to, okay, get underground and immediately 
uh, get an XP infusion here. Yeah, and the yeah. item we get from that is just to protect ring, not a key item that we're looking for. But again, the, the experience is the important part of doing that anyway. Okay, so Martin is now in the Fey March. Uh, just a moment, we'll be seeing what the Fey March freebie is, and a little bit after that, we'll be seeing who our two objective bosses here in the Fey March are. Uh, that's the so long sought after spoon for Edward. <laughs> so, if should we choose to keep Edward around, he will be very online with that. Yeah, that was a good pickup. Um, so yeah, if you're in Martin's shoes at this point, I think the only thing that you're really shopping for uh, to really round your party out is uh, glass hats. Well, <laughs> I would have laughed if we had seen glass hats in that shop, but we do find a tiara for, for Rosa to wear here, so there's that at least. I tried manifesting them, but you know, <laughs> it, it never worked for me when I actually try to run seeds either, so... Uh, yeah, it's fine. But yeah, yeah. Um, if you're gonna if you're gonna try to run spoon word, especially in this black set, uh, glass head is something you want to pick up. Uh, so uh, our our tracker points out, uh, Blaze picking up Yang instead of the Edward. And I looked away for just long enough to see a flat two flashes of red in the boss spots there. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, so, uh, according to our restreamer, uh, that was, uh, either Elements of Ruma Conte in the King spot, and, uh, DMs in the Queen spot, Dark Imps. Uh, the Dark Imps especially are not something you want to see in one of those two boss spots. Um, normally, of course, the Dark Imps are a free fight, uh, but here, they, they were punchy, uh, and there's three of them. It's not something that you can easily tangle with here. So, of course, Martin just warps back out. We're not ready to take on either of those spots quite yet. Good pickup in the uh, Tomer Armor Shop for Rosa. That's a hero. Right? You'd love to find it. Okay, uh, so Martin, uh, having looked through the Tomer Shops, uh, we'll see where he goes next here. Uh, Dwarf Castle will be the logical play at this point, I think. Uh, but no, uh, Martin is headed back above ground. This might be to follow up on those pan checks. Yeah, Martin, uh, Martin set that up first thing going underground. So yeah, I would definitely think he would kind of see how that's going to play out before doing anything else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Martin makes a beeline directly for, for bull. Uh, this will get us uh, information about two key items. Uh, one from just finding Yang in the round and the other from doing the pan, the pan bonk. Uh, so, Blaze, of course, also has the pan now from having gone through Baron, so I suspect we'll see them uh, go through go through Silk Cave as well. Pink tail and a crystal ring, so um, helpful for powering your party up. That crystal ring in particular is going to come in handy, uh, but the pink tail... Largely a zonk, unless you get something really good out of the tournament. And as you would expect, Blaze Underground with the pan in hand is also immediately going to do the pan bog. I suspect we'll see Blaze tracing Martin's footsteps here as well. Uh, but speaking of tracing footsteps, uh, Martin, uh, being back above ground, has landed at Eblen and is now in a much better position to take those trap chests. We know that the only value here, in any sense, is the package. So, uh, well, we'll see where, where this gets us. Uh, anyway, uh, as our, as our runners uh, rechase each other, this, this is, uh, once again, a good opportunity to shout out. Not only are runners, uh, both very skilled, uh, are putting on wonderful shows for us here, uh, but also to the rest of the team that's bringing you this restream. Hushed Pyramid in the restream room with Mecha pushing the buttons and my co-coms Y2 Sky. And don't forget the illustrious S. Grunt, a keeper of the Keeper of the fun clubs, by the way. Yeah. If you, uh, um, once we once we get to the end of tournament season, you definitely got to see what uh, fun clubs Ethron will come up with. I have had a blast. So. I'm glad yeah. to hear that. Okay, uh, Blaze, interestingly enough, is immediately electing to go follow up on the two pan checks here. Again, we know that there's no value from uh, uh, there's no value to be found here unless that except for that crystal ring. Um, and the value that having the additional key item that the pink tail is on hand. Um, but not the progression we're looking for. 
Yeah, and I got. I'm wondering about Martin's uh, Eblon Castle play at this point, especially with Dwarf still open to him. Um, wondering if he. Wonder if this is more of a FOMO play. Kind of worried about okay, if, if maybe if my opponent did Eblon Castle and found something good, I don't want to miss out on that. Uh, I mean, it's uh, Eblon has value, except when it doesn't, and in this case, it doesn't. Okay, uh, but Blaze uh, is uh, taking a few moments to set up uh, their party again. Uh, I believe we're going to see Blaze head back. Well, okay, Blaze hasn't done the full defense yet, so there's that first. Uh, again, no value he to be found here, but uh, you you don't know that until it's done. As a restreamer points out, um, we are approaching the the ten key item mark here on on both sides. Uh, Martin in particular has nine key items right now, so uh, he's just fishing for that one more to be able to get the double experience bonus from having ten key items. Yeah, definitely a good catch by a restreamer there. I'll, yeah, I've, I'm not used to seeing close to 10, 10 key items uh, this early in these type of uh, this type of flag set. Yeah, this is the type of flag set where you can, given the right set of objectives, you might only need two or three key items in order to be able to, in principle, clear everything in the seed. Of course, uh, actually being able to get your party to the point where they can clear the seed in those uh, circumstances is another matter entirely. Uh, but it is, in principle, possible. Uh, we can see that Spoon doing work on Martin's side, uh, having a much easier time clearing these chests than uh, Sid by himself did on uh, Blaze's side a while back. Okay, and uh, Blaze uh, has made their way to Dwarf Castle at this point. Notably, I believe Blaze has still not been down in the Fame Arch at this point. Um, so this is this is uh, priority prioritizing the the uh, two the uh, two potential key item checks that we've got here in Dwarf Castle. We do know that Bygan is the second boss here. We're gonna get a peek at the first boss here in just a moment. Um, that's a red robe. You would think that that's dark imps, but we've seen dark imps down in the fame arch right now. We know that this boss is going to be elements, which also identifies that the other red, the uh, Rubicante sprite we saw in the fame arch is just playing Rubicante. Yeah, that's an interesting fame arch. Um, that you know, Blaze not gonna have not gonna have any trouble with elements in in Tobigan here, but yeah, let's talk about that fame arch. Oh. Um, so that Yang looking a little bit better, especially if you've got an Ice Claw on hand. Yeah, uh, so <laughs> you don't want to see Rubicante in a spot like the Fame Arch King, which has reasonably powerful magic attacks, and that's exactly what we're up against now. Okay, Blaze is powerful enough to just demolish his element fight. Um, in the Dwarf 1 spot, it's not much of a threat. Um, there, there's other places where it could turn out or be far more threatening, like, say, the the Masamune altar, where basically you avoid the ruby phase at all costs, lest it murder your party mercilessly with the with the Fire 3 cast to the absolute earliest. Uh, but here, I'd say it's not much of a threat, and uh, Martin is probably very glad to see that as well, except for the fact that it indicates that <laughs> he, n he will now know that it's Ruby waiting for him in the Fame Arch King spot. And Mr. Buster pointing out, Blaze, uh, Blaze uh, Martin also got that same Ice Brain, because I think it was the uh, football reward. But yeah, yeah. that's going to be that's gonna be your Rubicante strat later in the Fame March. You're going to want Kane to jump with that Ice Brain, uh, and... On Blaze's side, uh, they'll be able to um, hopefully find an Ice Claw to put on Yang and use the power uh, power attack and avoid those Fire 2 casts. Yeah, we have a path forward to get through that Ruby Candidate. It's not going to be pleasant, but we know how it's going to be possible. Uh, we are, of course, glad to see that flag in there as opposed to one of the much later possible spots that it could be turning up in. Uh, Blaze gets through that fight without much difficulty, and after a short cutscene here, uh, we will either see Blaze immediately cast Warp to check the Sealed Cave item, or collect the Main Dwarf Castle item first. But we've got Tella, we can cast Warp, we're going to be seeing what both of these key items are. 
It's, uh, it's pointed in chat. We do know where Ice Claws are. They are in the Famarch weapon shop, and Martin has one. Yeah, Martin has an Ice Claw, but uh, no Punch Mage on his side right now. Okay, uh, so Blaze casts Warp immediately. Uh, this takes us into the same room we were just in, which is also the Sealed Cave uh, key item room, as it turns out. We just get a Dragoon lots of our troubles. Um, Kane will be happy to have that on hand if we run into any more dragon bosses, like Paladin, for example. Our Wyvern is still at large, uh, counts as a dragon for those purposes. And the dwarf key item is the Twin Harp. Yeah, non-objective Twin Harp, uh, definitely not something that is a favorite of the runners. Um, to answer Triple Factorial's uh, question, uh, the Warp Glitch is on for both this and the Moonville Mixer flag set that's coming up uh, in the next four weeks of the tournament. So uh, for all of Eblon Elixir League, the Warp Glitch is on. Yep. Okay, uh, so uh, with nine key items in hand, uh, Blaze is electing to do the Keyless Cower check. Uh, we're going to be on the hunt for the four alert trap chests in this tower for the most part. Um, the top of tower gets us another key item, but uh, really the value here is going to be looking in these trap chests for additional key items. Uh, Martin, having just cleared Dwarf Castle, now having ten key items with that twin harp in hand, is following closely behind. Uh, Blaze has found one of the alerts already, uh, and gets just a gold apple for clearing that particular chest, not the key item value we're looking for. In fact, it is the same chest as Morton just opened here. Uh, meanwhile, Blaze has found the second alert trap chest. Uh, we have enough damage uh, with Kane swinging here that we can just kill them with one hit. Uh, we get a tiara for a treble. Uh, that means that Blaze will not need to buy one later, or will not want to buy one later for uh, for Rosa uh, once they make their way down to the pay march. Martin will at least get pretty good use out of that apple, being able to apply it to the Edward. Yep. Great. There's uh, alert number three on Blaze's side. And that's the hook. That's uh, Blaze's tenth key item that also unlocks the whatever item we're going to get from the pink tail, as well as the key item check we get from turning in the rat tail. Yeah, hook is a pretty good find here. It's gonna, and it's also gonna give us access to two additional key item checks in the trap chests, and another look at a character. Um, and we definitely want to try and figure out the um, the seventh character uh, for our party here, uh, especially if it's a black mage, because we're starting to kind of run out of checks here. If the darkness crystal doesn't materialize somewhere here in the tower, um, then your other option is gonna be Hilt Cave. Um, and you're, you're definitely going to want some AoE to get through those traps, yeah. Yeah, I do want to point out that uh, with our Underground Axes getting us uh, the ability to fight the King and Queen in the Fey March, uh, counting for two objectives, uh, the Darkness Crystal gates three objectives in the seed. So with where we're at now, finding the Darkness Crystal is exactly go mode. Okay, uh, Blaze now at the top of tower. Uh, I must have missed the fourth uh, alert chest somewhere along the way, but uh, I don't think it was anything of import if that was the case. Uh, we find the Baron Guards. Ah, okay, our tracker points out uh, that Blaze did not open all of the chests all the way up, so that would explain why I did not see the fourth trap chest, because Blaze never found it. Uh, the Baron Guards uh, are much nastier in Beano you know, free mode. Um, they will counter attacks with uh, Size and uh, Piggy, and in Beano Free, you can't effectively counter those counters. Um, you can rely on magic resistance, you can rely on ribbons, which I don't think we've seen, uh, but you're going to need to deal with uh, these two relatively strong physical attackers until they're dead. Uh, our runners are going to have a slightly easier time than most uh, with the Baron Guards here, just by virtue of the fact that there are two Zeus Gauntlets. Um, available in both parties. Zeus Gauntlets also prevent uh, ca uh, a side cap, I believe. Uh, yeah, that, that that is an excellent point. We're not in any danger where physical attackers being made here. 
Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, the, the fourth trap chest, as it turns out, uh, despite me not having uh, actually seen it earlier, is, in fact, nothing of importance. Gonna be a little bit of a slow grind here with these uh, with these guards. Um, guards are classified as mages. Unfortunately, we're not uh, packing any mage slaying gear um, as far as mute knife or uh, mute arrows um, or elven bow. Don't really have those on hand at this point. So we're just uh, we're trying to get to them for raw damage here. Yeah, we certainly have raw damage in uh, large amounts, but uh, this spot had, does have a. Uh fairly hefty amount of help that we're going to need to chew through here. And our, our restreamer, our Hushpreamer, points out, uh, Martin actually has a mute knife for Kane. I, I, I never remember saw that being purchased, I just don't remember where it was from. Uh, but with the power of that mute knife, Martin is actually through that fight slightly faster than Blaze is. We get just a Masamune for our troubles of clearing that check, so that's... The hook is important, um, the top of tower is not. Uh, interestingly, uh, Martin reset out of that check, Blaze is not. So that actually gives Martin a little bit of time back as well, just so... Uh, Martin has basically seized the initiative here by uh, that reset and uh, the fact that he had the Mute Knight to be able to take on that fight. Yeah, um... About 55k, uh, 55k XP is nothing to uh, nothing to slouch about though. So uh, interesting enough, that's that's going to give Blaze a few more levels than Martin too. Yep, and uh, Blaze does uh, make their way back to pick up that fourth uh, that fourth trap chest on the way back down. We can everyone can see that it's just a ninja star. Uh, but Martin, of course, with the hook in hand, having that rat tail burning a hole in his pocket, uh, is going to launch the hovercraft to turn in at least the rat tail. We'll see if we get a pink tail turn in while he's over there. If this is not the darkest crystal. Um, we may see the harp check immediately after this. Because the alternative to doing that right now would be waiting your way through self-trap chests. But well, we can also dive the hook route. We have two trap chests there as well. There's that too. Uh, so if this is not the darkness crystal, which it's not, it's just the crystal crystal, uh, probably the next logical step would be to go check the hook rut trap chest and see if that character is anyone we care about. And we do see the pink tail turning, which is the crystal sword, so we can hope that Cecil is our last character in this scene, I suppose. <laughs> uh, Martin chooses to throw out the crystal sword. Now that's, uh, that's bold. <laughs> Oh, it, oh, is Asuka in chat? Oh, she, <laughs> she would have loved that. Yeah, okay, Martin picks up the hypercraft. We're going to see a dive of the hooker up here in just a few moments. I'm going to laugh if character 7 is the uh, Cecil down here in the hookrat. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, on um, so, th things on the Hulk route, uh, we, we've already got underground access, and things we're going to care about here are this very first trap chest on the Cave Evelyn area, which is to Stalemen. Uh, some people refer to this as the worst trap chest in the game, just due to, if you try taking this too early, these Stalemen are fast, they hit hard, they punch, and they put your characters to sleep. Uh, here, we're doing the punching. They don't have to worry about that. And that's a Legend Sword. Uh, that actually opens up another objective for us, because we've already got the Adamant Rock in hand from having completed Baron Castle. Uh, so, we've got one less thing to do. Uh, that's highly likely to be the Giant, uh, due to the amount of time that it takes to get through the two bosses there, and the cutscenes, and so on and so forth. Um, it also opens up the, the item from the Forge itself. Uh, it's an item which uh, corresponds to the hero in your scene, which here is Sid, uh, giving us a choice of the Gigant Axe, which can be wielded by Sid, Kane, or Cecil, or the Thor Hammer, or the Fiery Hammer. Uh, so, whatever Morton chooses to do that, uh, we'll get a nice additional weapon for Sid to be swinging around. Yeah, uh, Gigant Axe in particular would be pretty big, especially where we'll be able to 
uh, use it with the Avenger Kane. Uh, but unfortunately, this character is just an Edward, so we still do not get to see our seventh character. Yeah, okay. Uh, so the other thing that we're going to be looking for here is the Mad Ogre's chest in the upper tower, which is the other trap chest along the lock route. Okay, uh, meanwhile, Blaze is heading down into the Fame Arch. Um, we'll be picking up that spoon. Um, might have some things to say about uh, having ditched Edward earlier once uh, that spoon turns out. But Blaze is also in a much better position to attempt uh, to take one of the other of these bosses than Martin would have been when he picked this earlier. So I'm wondering if he might see an attempt on one of the bosses. I would say we're probably still not as well equipped as we could be, especially to take the, the Rubicante. Um, but uh, we, we might still see an attempt on one of the, one of the other of these bosses. Yeah, Blaze opting to stay at the Ritz-Carlton, so definitely definitely has an attempt on uh, in mind. And we, and Martin's already found the matter to test. Yeah, uh, these ogres are not going to be long for this world. Uh, we So we shall see if this is the key item value we're looking for, or if we need to go uh, to the harp check, or if we need to go digging around in self cave, or if we can just leave here and immediately head up to the moon. Okay, Blaze immediately knows that that's Rubicante, of course, uh, having seen elements earlier, and is heading into the Dark Amps fight. I didn't see what the item was, but that was a reset on Martin's part, indicating that that's uh, not an item that we care about. The question is asked in chat, there's potential for darkness at Twin Harp. Yes, that is correct. Yeah, Twin Harp and Sylph Cave, I think, are our two options left at this point. Uh, Martin is headed to Cave Magneves for uh, one of Chat's favorite checks, the Twin Heart check. So, uh, of course, once uh, Martin reaches the bottom of uh, Cave Magneves here, which will take some time, it's not exactly the, a runner's favorite check a lot of the time, but we will be getting a special performance from the one, the only DJ Spoony B in just a couple of minutes here. We can see that these uh, these dark games are pulling no punches here. This is exactly why you don't want to see them here. Yeah, even at the queen spot, uh, the queen spot still punches pretty hard, even though it's uh, not as notorious uh, as the uh, king spot or Bahamut spot for being punchy. Um, it's it's still very rough if you're uh, if, if you're not properly level for it. Yeah, we have we have uh, two blight casters, even though one of them is currently napping. Um, it is possible to get through this fight under these circumstances. It's just going to, uh, it's it's going to be sticky. Uh, okay, uh, that that's Rosa taking a last hit here. I no longer think this fight's in a winnable position unless we can finish off these dark imps with the next couple of swings, which actually may be the case. Okay, but as Blaze gets through that fight, it is now time for a special performance by the one, the only, DJ Spoony B. Stay tuned for tunes.
Okay, with that uh, lovely interlude from Xenoblade, uh, Martin uh, chooses his way through that Odin in record time. And is this the Darkness Crystal? No, it is the Luka Key, which is another objective item that we need, but it is also not the Moon Axis that we're looking for. Uh, I think we are going to be seeing some self trap chests this seed. Definitely will be. Uh, also getting also getting to see a sealed cave boss, which is exciting. Yep. Yeah, uh, I do want to point out, of course, that since this is six of eight objectives, we've got three moon objectives. We do need to find that darkness crystal in order to finish the seed. Uh, meanwhile, Blaze did get through the Dark Imps uh, with, the, with the clutch uh, last uh, couple of swings from Kane, and is now facing off against Rubicante here. Uh, we see Kane face down. Um, we have enough links, I think, to be able to handle this fight for the most part. Uh, we've got uh, Yang using power punches uh, in order to avoid getting the counters from Rubicante, which would deal a significant amount of damage here. Uh, but Martin uh, is now underground with that Legend Sword in hand, and uh, is going to be, is in fact right in the middle of forging here. Uh, I hope you get a look at the forge shop. <laughs> the S Wild forge shop is something of beauty. <laughs> there were actually a couple of useful items in there, uh, like that silence hat, but uh, we've got the Thor hammer as our, uh, as our forge item today, so Sid will be very happy to have that. Yeah, okay. We did see a, a Fire 2 counter from Blaze there. It does not deal nearly as much damage as I would have expected, um, but still not trivial. Uh, Morton, with the Luka Key in hand, is now headed into Sealed Cave uh, to see who our boss down there is and complete another objective. Uh, but Blaze is through the Rubicante fight. Um, everyone gets experience from that, and uh, Blaze has another objective on the board. We get a Bahamut Orb from that particular fight. Uh, we, of course, haven't seen Iridia. It's, it's, I, we still haven't seen her seventh character yet, so it could possibly be that Iridia. Um, but it's, that's, that's the sort of thing you want to see in this scene. Alright, so as Martin makes his, makes his way down Sealed Cave, um, trying to think how Blaze is going to play this to try and... So, Blaze is ahead of the Fame Arch pick, Martin is ahead of um, uh, pretty much the rest of this route that goes to the Steel Cave. So, Blaze is going to raise the Hovercraft, so that's going to indicate, yeah, we're going we're gonna to see a hook route check and a Rat Tail turn in. So after that point, it might be pretty safe to assume... Blaze is pretty much going to retrace Martin's steps, I think. Um, could see a cheeky harp fade going straight for Phil, but likely not. Not with the party that we have. Alright, we find just a Bahamut as the boss in the bottom of Sealed Cave here. Uh, this is one of the bosses you're glad to see down here because it's... Uh, um, this, this is a, an extremely fast boss spot. It can hit relatively hard. It can magic particularly hard. Uh, with Bahamut specifically, you the only thing you need to worry about is Mega Nuke, and if you've got enough Star Veils, uh, you don't need to worry about that either. Or if you can just hit it hard enough, fast enough to be able to choose its HP before it gets that off, you don't even need to worry about that either. So that is another objective on the board for Martin, bringing us up to uh, three objectives each for our two runners. Okay, Blaze, having done the tail turnings, is now headed directly to Cave Eplin and the Hook Route. Uh, we'll be on the lookout for those trap chests. Uh, we'll find them relatively quickly. And uh, the Legend Sword, of course, is going to be the more important find here. It is, I suppose there's a possibility that Blaze will just turn around immediately upon picking this up and just go forge immediately. Um, but your theory, you might as well go hunting for that second trap chest as well. Yeah, a little too risky at this point that, you know, of course, if Blaze doesn't know that that's his knock, but a little too risky at this point if you don't know what that is to, you know, you, you don't want to leave any potential darkness crystal on the table. 
Um, so very unlikely we're going to see a full turnaround. And in fact, yeah, Blaze is continuing into Blaze. Yeah, Blaze continues. Yeah, Blaze continues on. Uh, meanwhile, Martin is uh, heading back down into the Fame Arch. Uh, of course, is as we've just seen on Blaze's side, uh, Martin should also be in a position to be able to take these two fights now, which will put us at uh, five of six needed, and then we just need to find the Darkest Crystal for Martin to be in full go mode. Yeah, and I think that um, that spoon we're uh, going to give Martin a little bit of an advantage here as far as clearing these uh, Fame March fights, in particular the uh, the Dim. Yeah, we like we've, we've got the physical attack power on multiple party members on Martin's side here. Uh, the, the fight should go a little bit faster. Okay, Blaze finds Edward facing off against Atlion. Um, so. It's not going to be very much longer here before we find that second trap chest. I think Blaze will just leave conventionally upon finding that Dragoon Helm as the as the item here. Because I don't think we saw any additional saves on the way out here. Alright, Martin up against the Dark Amps. We'll see how this goes for him. Edward already blinked up, Kane only taking about 150 to 170 per swing. Yeah, um, this, this fight is very well in hand already. Oh, and the Thor hammer doing work too, Sid hitting for 2500. Yeah, this is, this is going to be much faster for Martin. Okay, Blaze has found the Ogre's chest. Um, well, we, we have both Sid and Tella down here. Uh, we can... We have we have uh, Rosa Berserking herself in order to 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 uh, fire some arrows at these ogres as well. Uh, but Martin is already through the Dark Games fight uh, with 100% survival rate. All right, and there's that second Avenger that we saw earlier on Blaze's side. And there's the last Ogre falling on Blaze's side. Uh, we'll see the Dragoon come in just a moment. Um, Martin ele is electing to just immediately go into the Ruby fight here after uh, taking a few moments just to re-equip, re-anchor, uh, etc. So, let's see how the Ruby fight goes for him. Not a bad idea here, um, Martin. Hand, uh, Martin handily won the Dimps fight uh, quite fast, so yeah, I, I like trying to I like trying to push the push the advantage here. Great. Uh, so I was wrong about Blaze not saving it earlier. We saw reset immediately after the Dragoon Helm popped um, back to that save point in Cape Evelyn. Uh, he, Blaze just exits out and is immediately headed to Forge as well. Uh, so on Martin's side, uh, we're actually seeing significantly more Fire 2 counters here. This is probably going to be a problem for both Tella and Edward here, uh, which is more of concern for for Edward, as he's one of our main damage dealers here. But that's, uh, we don't have to worry about the Fire 2 killing him if the glare just comes out and kills him instead. Yeah, Blink doesn't do anything against Glare. I really don't think it's a yeah. Oh, oh we get the uh, we get the loss now script and uh, Martin Martin uh, advancing the cursor on his fight menu to show his displeasure. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's very rare to see that speech. It's programmed uh, once uh, where we drop below a certain amount of health in response to a physical attack specifically. So you need to deal an attack. While Ruby is below that health threshold, that does not kill Ruby, and that's exactly what just happened. Anyway, Martin is through both of those fights, has five objectives on the board. Uh, we just need to find that Darkness Ghost Sun, go and fight one of the two bosses, probably the Cape Bahamut boss, um, in order to finish off this scene. Yeah, and we've already seen the DKC, so I don't really see much, and the Dimps, so I don't really see much that could really stop this party at Bahamut. 
Okay, uh, Blaze, with four objectives on the board, is in Self Cave, actively looking for those trap chests and that Darkness Crystal. Uh, he's choosing to fade the Twin Harp, which has the Loki key associated with it. So, uh, we are reasonably sure that the Darkness Crystal is here somewhere, just due to uh, having exhausted the remaining key item locations that we've got. Um, <laughs> so, we, uh, it, it's basically a matter of who finds the Darkness Crystal first, and will Blaze be able to clear two of the remaining objectives in the time that it will take Martin to find the Darkness Crystal and clear that one remaining objective? It looks like uh, both of our runners are taking fairly similar routes through Silk Cave here. That Centipede's chest is the first chest that both of them open. Um, it's just a Dragoon Lance, it's not the key item value we're looking for. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, Martin being up that sealed cave check, um, gonna be pretty tough for Blaze to overcome here. Um, especially since uh, Martin's not gonna have to walk down the LST at all. Yeah, okay. Uh, so, both of our runners have found the second trap chest, that's the Moro at Dark Tree chest. Um, Martin throws an hourglass here. Blaze is just looking to just hit things until they're dead which is perfectly viable with the amount of damage that we're putting out here. Okay, that should end the fight on Blaze's side. Uh, Martin has largely caught up by now, which is uh, a little bit disheartening. That's the tower key from Blaze. Uh, which gates... It is a gating key item check. Uh, it's possible that that tower key gets us the Darkness Crystal rather than it being directly here. You're here, you might as well just keep checking trap chests to see if something else turns up. Yeah, you're definitely going to finish clearing the back, but then the question is, are you going to then go back in and clear the front, or are you going to chase the tower key? Um, Darkness Crystal, obviously, in the back uh, chest here could make it a moot point. There's another Crystal Sword. I love this. Both our runners in lockstep right now in Sylph Cave. Wow, look at that sink. All right, and here we are in uh, what uh, some runners I know like to refer to this room as the Poison Hatchery. Uh, in vanilla, all six of these chests are trap chests. Uh, it's one of the reasons that there are so many trap chests in Sylph Cave. Uh, we find the first of three ghost chests here. Um, these ghosts, if they get a turn, will start casting Fire 2 on your party. Um, often one of the things you want to do first here is throw a Mute Bell. Uh, that prevents the Fire 2s from being cast and just makes them waste their first turn. And from here on, we can just basically punch them to death. Now, the second attack that the Ghost will do is a just straight-up physical punch, but uh, we might be through the fight before we see any of those come out. Yep, a lot of good melee attackers on both parties, so not too much of an issue. Okay, you do see uh, Ghost on Morton's side uh, punch Tella hard enough to be able to knock him out, um, but other than that... Uh, that's a moon veil we got from that chest. Uh, it's not a, it's not key item value, but that could turn out to be valuable depending on, especially for the uh, Cave Bahamut spot, which has the highest amount of physical attack power that you can get in any spot. If it's a particularly punchy boss, we're going to be very glad to have that. Yeah, that's basically going to make a physical boss free. And of course, Martin is exactly one boss fight away from being able to complete the seed once we've got that Darkness Crystal. Martin takes a moment to bring Tella back up. Uh, hopefully he doesn't get punched again, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, if they if they finish the back uh, the the back section clear here without the darkness crystal, what's going to be the play net? That's Justin, an Excal. And... That's an Excal, and that's it. Yeah. So, now, so... All right, moment of truth. 
Blaze is pursuing the tower key. Uh, we'll see what Martin does here. Bla uh, Martin heads back into Salt Cave to check the front trap chest. Uh, so, which of these has the darkness crystal? Yeah, and this potentially give this this potentially makes it a race here because um, Blaze being down that seal cave check is is gonna have to walk down the LST and uh, fight the Masamuni spot. Um, if the tower key is darkness crystal, this this puts Blaze back to having a fighting chance. Uh, if not, then Martin should have it well in hand. Okay, Blaze uh, unlocks the tower key room. Martin finds the next trap chest, which is the Toad Lady chest. Uh, Blaze finds Dr. Lugie in the Super Cannon room. This is less than ideal. Uh, just as much as, the, as as little health as these bosses have, uh, Dr. Lugie does have the disadvantage of having two faces to the fight. We do need to fight our way through both of them before uh, we can leave and check what that key item is. And of course, Blaze will need to get back down to the bottom of the tower before we can see what the key item we get from this check is. And while Martin uh, fighting his way through the Toad Lady check, uh, this is a completely free fight, uh, but um, if you don't have a good air, uh, AoE coverage here, uh, I've got that Stardust Rod. Um, then it can be a little bit painful to sit through. Uh, but uh, Martin through the fight uh, gets another Crystal Sword for his troubles, uh, and we're still looking for that Doctor's Crystal. Okay, another trap chest on Martin's side. It's the third and final ghost chest. Blaze reaches the bottom of tower. We'll see in about 30 seconds whether or not this is the correct play. This is, this is tense. This is very tense. I think this is the last chest on Martin's side, too. Survey says... There it is! The Dark oh, Crystal is behind the goodness. tower key. Blaze has the has has gained a bit of a lead here. Uh, we have a race once again. This is gonna be close. I don't think it's as close as it looks. Uh, we require Blaze to get uh, one additional boss out of the way here. And uh, it's going to take a while to walk down to the bottom of the moon should we want choose to do the Masamune check here. Alright, Martin's going to get the bad news in just a moment here. It's just an Avenger for his troubles. Exits out. Uh, Martin now knows that the Darkness Crystal is behind that tower key. So the question remains, uh, how quickly will Blaze be able to get through, presumably the Cape Bahamut boss, which will be the first stop for anyone up on the moon? How quickly will Martin be able to follow and get through that boss? How quickly will Blaze be able to get to one additional boss check? Uh, presumably the Masamune altar, uh, but there's always the chance that you could go for one of the other checks, but those are almost certainly going to be slower than just walking onto the bottom of the moon while they're already up here. Uh, Blaze lands outside Cape Bahamut. We'll be seeing who the boss here is in about a minute. Martin gets the bad news that Dr. Lugie is here in the tower room. I uh, will be delaying his exit out with the Darkest Crystal in just a few moments. Blaze heads into Cave Bahamut. At this point in time, a lot of the time runners will peek the boss in advance of uh, actually making the way to the spot. You don't have time to do that here. You're just going to make a beeline directly to the boss and take whoever it is. A sparkle. Uh, 
Uh, Blaze takes a moment to put the Dragoon Lance on Kane in lieu of the Avenger. If this is Wyvern, if this is Pale Dim, it's Pale Dim. Uh, <laughs> put the Avenger on, and uh, we're going to be through this fight extremely quickly. Uh, Pale Dim is a heavy physical attacker. Uh, that Dragoon Lance is going to chew through it faster than it can chew through this party. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, actually, this is this is not super great for Blaze. Um, yeah, you you would want to fight to where your opponent could potentially get tripped up. Uh, you don't want a gimme here. Yeah, and this is this is not that fight. Uh, it, it this is a very punchy spot. Uh, Pale Dim is not going to be able to get those punches out fast enough to really really deal a huge threat to the party. Like you still want to get those blinks in just to make sure your damage dealers can still deal damage, but. Um, this is, this is very straightforward. Pale Dim goes down. Blaze has a fifth objective on the board, and will now need to find one more objective to complete to finish off the seed. The unfortunate part about this is that if you are heading for the Masamune Altar, you need to sit to the character cutscene here. That is going to lose us uh, Blaze some time. Yeah, Martin already already getting the whale raised. Yeah, at the rate things that are going here, I suspect that Martin will be uh, at uh, Pale Dim well before Blaze makes his way to the bottom of the moon. Uh, it's just a duplicate Kane as the moon character here, so it's not even someone new. It's not even a set that we can get that crystal sword to. None of you would want to swap out your party members this late in the seed. Yeah, like, for, for Blaze to be able to pull us out at this point, I think uh, the Pale Dim fight needs to go very sideways for Martin, and uh, I can't see that happening. No, we're, we're, we have a Dragoon that's well-equipped. We're, we're not in any position to lose to a Pale Dim here. Yeah, and we've got uh, copious amounts of arty arrows as well, don't forget. <laughs> Yeah, so they kind of retraced each other's steps a lot. Um, if I'm looking back at this, um, just uh, Martin making the shopping checks just slightly earlier than Blaze, and kind of, kind of took on each fight with a little bit of a power a power advantage, and but we could see that that kind of built up into um, them them being in lockstep, but Martin is just up one entire objective from a chain so yeah well run race by both runners but yeah just um and that's been that's been an overwhelming theme of this black that is just uh the quicker you find your power oh um, that's that can give you a, a big advantage to the whole race yeah as uh as i was going to find out but as our tracker michael also points out uh martin went into the Paladin fight directly without bothering to re-equip Kane, meaning that Kane is just swinging the plane Avenger here, or not getting the advantage of that Dragoon Lance. Yeah, it's gonna take a little longer, but I don't... Well, Blaze is already at the save point. It's gonna take, uh, it's gonna take some serious, uh... It's gonna take some serious board AI, unfortunately. Uh, Blaze is coming up on the um, Masumune altar. Who have we got here? Ooh, that's Wyvern. It's the other dragon, and Blaze is wielding the Avenger. We get Digest as the Witch Burn today.
But that's it. Pale Dim is down on Martin's side. Uh, that's the sixth objective on the board for Martin. Boy, Blaze did everything uh, they could to give themselves a fighting chance here, but unfortunately Martin is going to take it and we'll get the official time in. 126.55. GG to Martin. We'll see if we can get Martin in here for an interview. And in fact, uh, Blaze is just through that wyvern as well. This really came down to the wire. Uh, and just, uh, so... This is this is a different, going to be a difference in finish times of less than a minute. Uh, Blaze has uh, through that wiper and has six objectives on the board. Finishes with a final time of one hour twenty seven minutes and thirty six seconds. GGs to Blaze, and I believe in just in fact just right now we are now joined by both both Martin Broadcloak and Blaze. GGs to the both of you. Hey, thanks. Yeah, thank you. GG's to you, Blaze. That was, uh, boy, that was fun. Yeah, that was a good race. Yeah. So, th I, th I think the, the first thing that's on my mind, and it's probably going to be on a lot of people's minds, is uh, that, that Darkness Crystal and where it was, uh, where it turned out to be. Um, at, so, as it turns out, um, the Darkness Crystal is behind that tower key buried de deep in Self Cave. Uh, Martin, you chose to continue clearing Self Cave and found that a little bit later than Blaze did. Uh, Blaze uh, found, basically went and checked the tower key immediately. Uh, what were your thought processes going on at that point in the scene for the both of you? Go ahead. Uh, I'll go second. Okay, yeah. Um, I basically committed to not harp, and I was going to check everything that was not twin harp before I did it. And tower key, after clearing half of Sylph Cave, I was right there. It made more sense to go check the, do the check there, and then just come back and finish up Sylph Cave if it was in darkness. Um, and I figured I was already dead in the water if uh, darkness was through. Or at that point, I knew it had to be at a spot because there were no more chain items. So um, I had to either hope that either Martin had also faded Harp or um, I, you know, was just uh, going to lose. So I had to give the people what they wanted. Harp, Harp was always in play for me. <laughs> it was just a matter of when it routed in well. So um, <laughs> that's all. And when it turned up Luca, it's like, all right, well, that saves us small amount of time from the uh from the cutscene at the moon going down um but yeah i've i've said from the beginning of this flag said that i will live and die by sylph um and it's it's gotten me a few times i thought really hard about that tower key um i did back half first thinking that would be the very last thing anybody would check saw that key and I, I was clearing traps so well, it was, you know, I, I sat there and, you know, had like, I think I had three left at the time, and it was like, well, they're fast enough, and tower key plus the whole, you know, waiting for the airship and everything, it's like, you know, that, that amount of time, I can probably clear the other three traps in that amount of time. So, whatever. I'll stick around, and if it's the tower key, I will live or die by the result. So... We definitely took it from uh, uh, took it based on a few seconds, and um, despite that, um, I'm gonna actually look back towards kind of the mid game of the seed. Um, so at this point, you had gotten underground, you found the magma key, uh, Martin. Um, then before doing, I think after the pan turn ins, but before going back down and doing fourth, uh, you went back for Evelyn Castle. Um, what uh, what was your um, what was your plan uh, kind of going through your head at this point? At that point, I was looking at the fact I had half a forge at that point, and coming up, turning in the pan, and not really getting a lot out of it. It's like, you know, when is Evelyn ever going to like be anywhere near the top of my mind ever again? And the answer was, short of right now, never. 
so and usually it's you know kind of a spot for early game experience so i i had a feeling that blaze may have done that well earlier than i did so i figured i probably should get it out of the way in case there was something valuable there of course there wasn't but you know hey um so but yeah no that was that was the only thing just get it off the plate and you know one less thing i can you know be burned by so yeah, speaking of things that ended up not having very much in the way of value, uh, a little bit earlier on in the seed, uh, Blaze on your end, uh, you, so you had picked up the Magma Key after I, just having cleared Zot. Uh, you had the Baron Key in hand and chose to go directly to Baron immediately after that, uh, rather than potentially heading directly into your crowd. At that point, you would have known that the Demis was lurking there, but was there any other particular reason that you would have chosen to go to Baron at that point in time rather than heading directly into your ground? Uh, I think if uh, the Demist hadn't been there, I probably wouldn't have gone there. But uh, it felt like a good uh, double up. Plus, uh, there wasn't a ton of incentive to do our deals. And I had kind of, um, I had made that kind of like my early game gamble, I guess I would say. And so I wanted to follow my play uh, as well. So yeah, it kind of ended up being a little bit of a bust. But I mean, all things considered, I don't really regret the play. Uh, but it, it was... When some when a race is this close, obviously little things like that can probably make a big difference. So yeah, exactly. I'll I'll bounce off that too. Um, same reasoning. It was exactly for Demist. Like character wise, I mean we had so much power. Just the shops and you know the the character selection. And it's like you know. Like, if Cecil or somebody is back here, like, eh, whatever. It's like, I don't need them. I'd appreciate them, but I don't need them. So it was more for Demis, just to, it, like Blaze said, it was a double check. So. Well, I mean, the, the seed. The, the, the seed kept giving you crystal swords, even though you were trying your best not to take them. <laughs> I mean, Look, the, seed ga the seed gave me a Zeus gauntlet and a. Uh, white spear and an avenger and cane within the first 15 minutes so i can't really complain about what the seed gave me personally i don't know about you mark <laughs> no no i had no complaints at all <laughs> so uh no no they g it gave out so much i trash canned a crystal sword because you know it had it coming so <laughs> yeah that was definitely one of the uh the, the fun moments of the seed um well Definitely put a put on a masterclass for it tonight, uh, both of y'all. Um, fantastic race. Uh, I think the only thing I would have left to ask is um, uh, any any thoughts as we look forward to Moonvale Mixer next week. I I am looking forward to Moonvale Mixer. It's much more of the kind of flag set that I feel like historically I've done really well with, although. I was 40 seconds away from going 3-0 in Potion Party, so maybe this was fine too. I don't know. I really enjoyed this flag set, uh, and I think that the viewers will be really happy for uh, the return of Zeromus, for one thing. And uh, I don't know if I'm looking forward to that, honestly, because uh, Sea Hero uh, Zeromus fights are really, really hard sometimes, uh, so I'm not really thrilled about that. But I got a few days to practice, I guess, right? How about you, Martin? Uh, yeah, no, it's about the, about the same. Um, no, I, I had a blast with Potion Party. Potion Party was fantastic. Um, it's nice to see K-Trap and see Hero and somehow have it all work together. So, yeah, I, I had a blast with this. And I feel like a lot of it's going to translate very well into Moonvale. Um, just from the standpoint of, I, I think people now understand exactly what levels you can get away with doing certain things at now so i think we're going to see a lot more of you know kind of the run and gun style in moonvale and you know with adamant armors being on i i think a lot of people are going to start coming out to play in that flag set ends it's going to be a blast um i'm i'm i need to do a few seeds it's gonna be weird facing z again you know not not stopping it you know low level 30s all of a sudden no there's one more boss you have to go after like oh how do i do that fight again uh nuke it in the face yes that that yes that works yeah and uh only dealing with tier five items the first part of the seed like 
you know, going through a practice season, I'm like, oh, what do you mean I can't get a Stardust rod? Come on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> when you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to go shopping. Well, here's your Ograx. Cool. <laughs> yeah. What else is there in Ograx? So, uh, so Blaze, I'll definitely have to one-up you on one of the statistics. Uh, I would also be 3-0 and in Potion Party, if not for 11 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you definitely got me beat there, Sky. Uh, Let that wait. be a lesson. Seconds matter. Yes. Mm. Yeah. I'm yeah. Just, I, I'm just I think really my, I think my I got to play three really good matches against you know three really good community members, and I, I hope that a lot of other people feel the same way about you know well the league as a whole. But I guess we're kind of at the halfway point now, and uh, it's just been really fun to participate uh, in a in a format where every match matters and people get to have a good match every week against someone that's around their skill level. So. Mm-hmm. I, I I think this has been a really successful experiment so far, and I'm really excited to see uh, how it how it plays out down the stretch here. Yeah, indeed, it's 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 definitely been fun to watch um, everything from uh, matchups like this one to uh, to two completely brand new runners uh, uh, playing in a tournament for the first time and giving us then a, a very exciting race also. So. Yeah, been very happy with the format for sure. Um, I think that's that's going to cover everything I've got. Uh, S. Crunch, you got anything else? Uh, no, I just want to say uh, thanks once again to the to the both of you for putting on such an excellent show for us tonight. Absolutely, and GG's Martin, that was that was a fun one. I, I can't wait to watch it back. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely on the short list of things to do tonight. So <laughs> I'm yeah. looking forward to it. Uh, and thanks everybody who came out and watched and uh, also volunteered to help out with the restreams. Uh, hope we put on a good show for y'all. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Mecca, for tracking. Uh, thank you, Pyramid, for uh, <clears throat> that seed. Um, <laughs> I did the twin harp just for you. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> other than that, uh, anything, anything I have to say? Uh, no. Uh, weeks five through seven were announced. So anyone participating, go look. There's some fun ones in there. You might be surprised. All right. Uh, so that brings us to the end of our stream for tonight. Um, so that's that's the end of our lineup for tonight. Uh, but we're not done with Free Enterprise for in general for tonight or for this week, for that matter. Uh, in just a few moments, uh, we are going to be sending you over to Night Arcanum. Uh, you may have just heard about a lot about the Moonvale Mixer flags. Uh, Night Arcanum is, in fact, trying out the Moonvale Mixer flags right now. Uh, but, Sky, what else do we have lined up for the final day, uh, that is tomorrow, uh, for, for the tournament? Uh, well, for tomorrow, uh, first off, starting bright and early at 10.30 a.m. on Free Enterprise, we have Zilch of the Rusty Spoons versus Ike here of Kogel Shop Quartet. Uh, then we get a little bit of a break uh, before a 4 o'clock match between Frankie Bones and Cubs Rule 21, uh, representing Demi and Jimmy Eat World and New Moon respectively. Um, 7 o'clock on Free Enterprise 2, Commander Leonhart versus the Bardic Panda. And 9 o'clock we have uh, Thethel versus Fly Eagle Fly 72. Um, so a great play to match up uh, coming up tomorrow to, uh, to send Potion Party off with a bang. Yep, and uh, those will be the last races of this phase of the tournament with po- the Potion Party flags. That's starting next week. We'll be getting into the Moon Gun Mixer flags. So once again, thank you all for watching tonight. Uh, we will see you uh, tomorrow for the next and last round of races of Potion Party.